some people with Lyme modify their exercises and stay fit? How hard can you push yourself? Make yourself stronger as a person. We're going to dive right into that in this podcast. Maybe even throw a little weight around. My guest on this Can Lime podcast is Gina Vales, who sweats through Lyme and helps others stay strong. Stick with us. We're going to do some heavy lifting. Gina Vales grew up staying fit, and she knew from a young age that she wanted to be a trainer and a business owner, all the while coaching and leading people. She has a degree in exercise science and founded Gina's Total Fitness in Connecticut. She has an Instagram following of almost 180,000 people. In 2017, Gina was diagnosed with Lyme disease, which changed her life and her outlook on fitness. I'm delighted to welcome her to our podcast. We reached her today in South Windsor, Connecticut. Welcome to the podcast, Gina. Hi. I follow you on Instagram. It's so exciting to finally meet you. Nice to meet you guys as well. How did you first become involved with Lyme disease? Um, so I actually was, so I got diagnosed with Lyme disease in 2018, but I was undiagnosed for a year in 2017. Um, and it was pretty much just my story of, you know, getting Lyme disease and I knew nothing about it then. Um, and just really have educated myself, you know, since, you know, having it and managing it day to day since then. And how has living with Lyme changed your life physically? Because I know you're an athlete, so I know how how much an impact that has on, on your body. Yeah, so I've been an athlete my whole life. You know, I'm, I'm, I've am i been a very competitive athlete, top athlete. And um, when I got sick, um, you know, things started changing. I couldn't train as hard as I wanted to. You know, I couldn't really do high-intensity stuff anymore. Um you know, like it's very hard for me to sweat. So I had to just really adjust my workouts to, um, you know, more body weight and more flow and, um, lower intensity. Um, so even though I am still an athlete, there's times where I can go a little harder on the good days, but it's just more about movement now. So it's really, I've just really adjusted my workouts a lot. Um, you know, and it took a lot of time, trial and error, you know, especially being an athlete, that's like the hardest part, because you always want to go hard and you want to go hard. But, you know, with all the inflammation in my body, you know, workout is a stressor on the body, which causes inflammation. So um, I really had to just adjust. And um, I found a way that works for me. Yeah, it really sounds like you learned how to listen to your body is actually one of my questions just about, you know, what are your thoughts around fighting versus, you know, listening to your body and resting and healing when you need to do that? Yeah, so at first, you know, I think this is like always a daily struggle, but then as time goes on, you know, years go on, you just try, you have to accept it. You have to just be grateful for the body that you, you have and the movement that you can do. So, you know, when I was first diagnosed and I was like, okay, I want to go really hard and, you know, you know, squat, you know, 225 and all this stuff. And, you know, I would try to keep doing it, try to keep doing it. And I'm like, my body just did not like it. And it was saying, no, 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 no. So I think the hardest part was, you know, accepting it. Um, but once you start accepting it, you know, it, it changes your, it changes your like mindset about it. So now, you know, I'm just grateful to have a body that I can move and, you know, I might not be able to squat on the bar 225 anymore, but you know what, I can squat still, you know, 135 or 105 and it's just being grateful for what you can do now. And it's, it's not that, you know, you're less of an athlete or you're not as strong, you know, I feel stronger than ever in a different way. Absolutely. I think that's so key, just knowing how to adjust your mindset and being gentle with yourself and finding your new normal and then building upon that. Absolutely. Now, I found a really great quote on your Instagram. um, Stronger than ever, a Lyme warrior will always turn pain into strength. What does that mean to you? Yeah. So um, when I was going through, you know, my story, um, my journey with Lyme, you know, I, I felt it makes you, you know, not having answers for a while, it makes you feel, you know, very lost and makes you feel like weak, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, you feel very lost. 
And, um, you know, I think, you know, everyone would say, you know, you have Lyme disease, like, don't you feel weaker? Don't you feel worse? And you, honestly, it's all mindset. And I've just really had to change my, the way I look at it. And I, you know, you just turn all that pain, the physical pain, the emotional pain, the mental pain of, you know, not having answers to going through the, you know, being bedridden to being sick, going to 10 specialists, getting every x-ray possible. And you turn all that pain and you turn it into strength and you find your purpose within that. So I say, I always say be 1% better every day. Don't try to be a hundred percent better. So yes, I know I have Lyme disease and I live with it, but my Lyme disease doesn't like define who I am. So, um, I just use that to really, you know, all the pain I went through, I just have turned it into purpose and strength and everyone out there, you know, who's going through something like this, you know, it's, it's hard to see late at the end of the tunnel, but if you do change your mindset and you do just adjust and, you know, just, you know, daily gratitude, I think is a huge part of that. You can really turn that pain into any type of strength you want. And for me, it's to help other people. Who are dealing with this to tell them that they're not alone and that there is light at the end of the tunnel, even if it looks different from, you know, what they thought their life should look like. Oh, that is just so inspiring. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. It's so important yeah. for people to hear. Absolutely. Do you have any advice about how people can find their own inner warrior? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's just going, you know, I think going through adversity of getting, whether it's, you know, any autoimmune disease, whether it's cancer, or Lyme disease, but, you know, going through, you know, the lows, hitting rock bottom, bottom going through the, all the adversity. Um, it's just really, it's, it's about, you know, digging deep and, you know, a warrior is someone that doesn't, a warrior, I think everyone thinks like, you know, being a warrior is just being strong all the time. And it's, that's not the case. I, you know, being a warrior is falling down and feeling low and, you know, being sick and, you know, getting up every day and, you know, giving your best and trying to be 1% better. And I think, you know, that's just, it's within, you have to dive deep in and find that inner warrior in yourself. Oh, that's so great. Uh, thinking specifically about exercises, how can people modify their exercise routines um, so they can stay fit? Yeah. So, well, so I guess, cause I've had it since 2017. So I've done a lot of trial and error, like with weights, without weights, um, walking, cardio, you know, strength training. And since, you know, Lyme disease, it is, it's, it's inflammation in the body and, you know, all those, all the bad, bacteria, pathogens, viruses, they all want to come out and they, you know, that's what the Lyme disease is. And the whole point of that is to try to hide those guys um, and manage it because you, I've, it's not curable. It's going to be in your body. Um, but, you know, for me personally, a mix of everything has helped me. So like, I know I can't do super heavy weights anymore. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, how, when I wake up that day, it's kind of like, all right, what is, what is my body saying? What, what does it want? What is it craving? Is it craving a mobility routine to get blood flow, to open up my spine, open up my joints that the Lyme disease is attacking? Or, you know what, can I push it a little bit today and, you know, add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of weight, you know, just to build that foundation. Or maybe today is just good for a walk, just to get blood flow, get to, you know, vitamin D. So I don't think there's a set in stone um, program but it's more so about listening to your own body and trial and error through different modalities um, in different programs. Yeah, and you bring up a great point of just that movement and how important that is, especially for supporting like our lymphatic system and draining yeah. those toxins out of our body. Um, we, we had uh, Angela Nath, she's a triathlete. She was on our podcast earlier this season and she was talking about how for her, you know, she really needed to cut out some of the more high impact um, sports. So she said for her as a triathlete, biking and swimming were so much better for her body than, say, running. The high impact really um, affected her more. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that's through her trial and error and just listening to her body. I mean, personally, um, you know, so like running for me, actually, it feels great on my body. Um, so 
that's just the blood flow. I think for me personally, um, you know, like I still lift, but like, if I do a lot of heavy lifting, that's my body really, really kind of shuts down because the central nervous system. Um, so yeah, it's for me, it's just honestly, like I wake up and I'm like, okay, today is like a good run day or tomorrow, you know, I need a rest day, you know? So, um, I think the high intensity and then like the high impact, like you said, maybe for her, you know, that has a, a huge effect on hormones too. And hormones is a huge part of that as well. So, um, you know, it's just, it's finding what works for you. And, you know, I, I don't think there's, you know, just one fits all, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. How do you know when you've pushed it too hard? <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me personally, like, if I go too hard, I can actually, I actually feel it in my body. So I actually feel like my heart rate, maybe I'm having like my heart rate skyrockets and I'm feeling anxiety or, you know, heart palpitations or my joints really hurt. Um, so there's certain things, you know, that I think set it off. Um, but every, when you listen to people though, who have Lyme, like everyone's a little different. So like, you know, there's some people who have Lyme disease who can't tolerate the heat personally, the heat works way better for me. I don't do good in cold weather when I'm working out. So, um, you know, because there it is Lyme disease, but remember there's different co-infections with Lyme disease. So everyone does, everyone's body is different depending on whatever that tick carried. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it, the co-infections itself. Um, so yeah. And are there any considerations for recovery that you've found beneficial? Yeah. So, um, I have done, you know, sauna therapy. Um, I have done, um, red light therapy. I've done cryotherapy. So I've done cold, hot, um, you know, mitochondria therapy. And cause we want to increase that cellular, um, level. So again, you know, some people with Lyme disease, just they go into an infrared sauna and maybe it's too much for them at that point, you know? Um, but it's really, you know, just like I said before, everyone's so different, but personally for me, like the sauna has really helped me, um, with some die off and, you know, cryotherapy has really helped with my inflammation. So that's, that's two extremes right there, cold to hot, you know? Um, and then the red light is awesome just in general too, for, you know, cells and, um, mood and all that at a cellular, um, level. So you and I have both chosen to share our experiences publicly. How does sharing help us? Yeah, I think, you know, I get this all the time because I'm a very, I'm a very open book um, with my story. And yes, I do believe when you share your story, yes, it helps you heal within. So I think sharing my story does help me, but it also, there's, it's, it's about, connecting with others to make them feel like they're not alone as well because as human beings we need connection we need networking um we need that so i think sh for people sharing personally for me sharing my story you know i get messages all the time saying thank you so much for sharing your story like you know it's helped me every day like just be a little more positive and all that and that's like the best feeling in the world, you know, just helping other people and seeing the change and, you know, having them be the change. Because if I help one person, you know, that person can help another person. Um, so I think sharing, you know, your story and everyone's different. Some people are, you know, I'm more private with a lot of other things in my life, but something like this, you know, it's always felt right. And I just want to help people and, you know, make them believe, you know, to find that inner warrior and to not give up and that, you know, there's, there is hope. There sure is. There's a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't mean there's, look, I have bad days. Like there's going to be some, a lot of bad days. There's going to be a lot of good days. There's going to be okay days, but that's all part of it. So it's not that you're going to cure yourself. It's, a, it's more about managing it and, you know, being, centered and being, you know, bloom where you're planted with, you know, your journey and your disease. After all that you've gone through, do you think you've experienced some post-traumatic growth? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy. So, you know, since 2017, it's been a, it's been a long road just with 
Lyme disease. You know, I also have had Epstein Barr and mono. I also, you know, I own a gym, you know, with COVID. I got, I had COVID, Lyme disease, and mono, Epstein Barr all together this year. Oh, and God. yeah, in owning a gym, you know, gyms, over 6,000 gyms closed this year. And I was trying to still run a gym, you know, and it was just, it was a very, I, I will just, you know, say this, I, you know, it was a very rock bottom year for me. And, um, right now where I'm at, I'm just, you know, I've grown so much in the past, just the past couple of months and, you know, relaunch, I'm launching a brand new brand called immune and it's for, it's for warriors in general, but it's for, you know, a lot of the Lyme warriors, um, and, you know, the, you know, just our immune system. So I got, you know, that name, it just really felt right. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to launch that. I can't give the deep full details yet, but um, it's going to be, you know, lots of health, nutrition, workouts, and a lot more. Um, and that will be launched May 18th. Oh, that's fabulous. Well, it sure yeah. sounds like you've gone through the challenges, but through it all, it sounds like you've really fortified your spirit and your strength and your mindset. So way to go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you too. You sound great over there. So Yeah, thank you. Do you do you have any closing comments for our listeners and your Instagram community? Yeah, so um so I do I share a lot on Instagram. So I have three handles. <laughs> But um, so one of them is Gina Vales Fit. That's more of, I share my Lyme disease story on there. Um, but that's more, you know, I post workouts all the time, daily movement, um, motivation, inspiration. And then my Gina's Total Fitness is my gym. So I have a gym here in Connecticut. Um, and so if you live around me, you guys are more than welcome to, you know, come stop in, join the community. And then my new handle is Immune Warrior. So you know, especially on this podcast, all my, you know, warriors out there, autoimmune or Lyme disease, um, you could give that a follow and engage with us because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you. Um, but I guess just closing, you know, is I think your environment and your support system have a lot to do with it. So um, I know if one of my Instagrams or Facebook pages can, you know, be positive for you, um, you know, I would love to hear your story and you can shoot me a DM. Um, I would get back to you as soon as I can. And just to, you know, not give up. And I know it's, it's easier said than done, but um, every day I think you just have to wake up and like with living with Lyme disease, like I wake up and the moment I put my feet on the floor, like you don't know how you're going to feel with this disease. So like pretty much the morning I wake up and I put my feet on the ground, I know if this is going to be a bad day or a good day. Um, but you can always make it, you know, the best day possible with just your mindset. So, um, you can't give up on those bad days. You just have to take the bad days with the good. Well, you are truly an inspiration, Gina. Thank you so much for giving hope to so many people. And thank you for speaking up about overcoming your challenge. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And, uh, yeah, this was fun. Gina Vales is a personal trainer from South Windsor, Connecticut. In her words, remember to bloom where you're planted and try to find a way to turn pain into purpose. That's another podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Cormode. Remember to stay safe in the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs>